What's up guys, I'm Alex with the Signal RGB team and in this video we're going to take a deep dive into RGB controllers. There seems to be a lot of confusion around these things because there's all these different types of controllers and connectors that just makes everything super confusing. I'm going to go over some of the most popular controllers from different brands and I'm also going to show you guys how to set them up physically and inside of Signal RGB. I'm also going to cover some of the limitations of each controller and also how you can use RGB adapter cables to connect devices like the Lian Lee Strimers to a controller that's going to let you sync them to the rest of your setup. I'll be leaving links in the video description to all the controllers and adapters that I mentioned in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's first talk about the difference between 5 volt 3 pin and 12 volt 4 pin. The 5 volt 3 pin header is known as an addressable RGB header, ARGB, or a digital RGB header, DRGB. It uses three pins, one for power, one for data, and one for ground. The data pin is the key to individual LED control on whatever device is connected to the header. The 12 volt 4 pin header is known as a non addressable header. It uses four pins one is red, one is blue, one is green, and one is ground. Because there's no data pin, there's no individual LED control. All of the LEDs will simply take whatever input is coming from the red, green, and blue pins, and that's it. Make sure you never connect a 3 pin into a 4 pin and vice versa, because you can damage your devices. One other thing worth mentioning, the 5 volt 3 pin header is poorly placed on some motherboards, so it might be hiding under your graphics card. Be sure to double check that if you don't see it. Now let's take a look at the difference between an RGB controller and an RGB hub. Manufacturers like to mix these terms a lot, but in general, an RGB hub like this Thermaltake TT-Sync controller, which they should have called a hub, doesn't allow you to individually address components. In other words, it's just an RGB splitter that clones the same RGB effect onto every component that's connected to it. RGB hubs usually have a 5 volt 3 pin ARGB connector that connects to a motherboard header or controller. There's an exception to this. It's the Corsair RGB Fan LED Hub. It doesn't act like a splitter. It's actually a very useful hub that you'll hear me mention soon. An RGB controller like this Commander Core XT allows you to individually control every component that's connected to it. Most of the time, these controllers connect to one of the internal USB 2.0 ports on your motherboard. This also means that your motherboard does not need to be supported in Signal RGB for it to work. Just the controller itself needs to be supported. And all of the controllers I'm covering in this video are supported by Signal RGB. Lastly, let's take a look at the difference between proprietary and generic RGB controllers and components. A proprietary RGB controller essentially means you don't have the option of connecting components from other brands to the controller. For example, all of Corsair's controllers only let you connect Corsair components, and those components can't be connected to any other brand controller either. However, you can bypass this proprietary nonsense with third-party adapters, which I'll go over at the end of the video. Non-proprietary RGB controllers and components are interchangeable because they use generic 5 volt 3-pin ARGB. I'll cover all of the non-proprietary controllers first. This is the Razer Chroma Addressable RGB Controller. It's your best friend if you have a lot of 5 volt 3-pin ARGB devices that you want to connect and control through one place. Each of its 6 ports can handle up to 80 LEDs, but the maximum total that the controller can handle is 240 LEDs. So for example, you could have 80 LEDs connected onto 3 ports, or 40 LEDs connected on all 6 ports. The top of the controller is where you connect the power cable, which then connects to Molex, and the USB cable that connects to internal USB 2.0. In Signal RGB, you'll see 6 channels, one for each port on the controller. This is the Cooler Master Gen 2 ARGB Controller A1. Each of its three ports on the right side of the controller can handle up to 80 LEDs with a maximum total of 240 LEDs. On the left side is where you connect the SATA power cable and the USB cable that connects to internal USB 2.0. This is a great small form factor controller if you don't have that many 5 volt 3 pin ARGB devices. In Signal RGB, you'll see three channels, one for each port on the controller. This is the Aqua Computer Farbwork 360. It has four 5 volt 3 pin ARGB headers and a super small form factor. It's expensive, but if you really want something that will take up minimal space in your case, then this is the controller for you. This is where you connect the USB cable, and then this part's a little tricky because it's not your typical connector. It still goes into your internal USB 2.0 header, but you have to connect it to these five pins. You'll want to align the black wires with the side that's missing a pin like so. And then for power, it uses Molex. In Signal RGB, you'll see four channels, one for each 5 volt 3 pin ARGB port on the controller. This controller also comes with two proprietary RGB strips that connect here but you have to do some extra steps to get them to work in Signal RGB, so I'll leave a link to the instructions in the video description. This is the Zalman Z-Sync controller. It has a whopping 8 5V 3-pin ARGB ports. The only reason I didn't mention this controller at the very start is because it's almost always sold out, and you can only buy it on Amazon if you buy the Zalman fans too. Each of the 8 ports can handle up to 40 LEDs, but the controller has a maximum of 192 LEDs, so you wouldn't be able to have 40 LEDs on every single port. That's something to keep in mind. You'd be able to have 24 LEDs on every port if you used all 8 ports. In my opinion, you're still better off buying the Razer controller because it's a little cheaper, and it can handle more LEDs unless you really need 8 ports that can handle a small amount of LEDs per port. 
This controller connects to internal USB 2.0 and it's powered using SATA. In Signal RGB, you'll see eight channels, one for each port. That covers all the relevant non-proprietary controllers. Now I'm gonna move on to all the proprietary controllers. I'll start with all of Corsair's controllers. Corsair controllers use two types of proprietary connectors. There's this four pin for controlling the RGB on their fans and this three pin for controlling various other Corsair devices. All Corsair controllers connect to an internal USB 2.0 header and they're powered using SATA. The Commander Core XT is a great solution for both fan speed control and RGB control in one. This controller is included with the purchase of a Corsair 7000X or 5000T case, but you can buy it individually to upgrade your existing setup. It includes six 4-pin RGB ports and six ports for fan power. There's also a 3-pin RGB port for connecting these additional Corsair devices. This controller can control up to 264 LEDs out of the box, so that means you can connect the QL fan to all six ports and you'd still be able to connect an additional 60 LEDs to this 3-pin RGB port. However, if you connect the Corsair fan RGB LED hub to the 3-pin RGB port, you'll be able to add up to 204 LEDs or six QL fans worth of LEDs, because this hub is powered using SATA, which gives it more headroom. This means you can run 12 QL fans through the Commander Core XT. Now keep in mind that the Corsair fan RGB LED hub requires fans to be connected in order, starting from ports one to six. You can't skip a port because then it won't work right. In Signal RGB, you'll see two channels. Channel 1 is for the 6 RGB fan ports, and channel 2 is the 3-pin RGB port. This is what my personal configuration looks like. I have 6 QL fans on channel 1, and 6 QL fans for channel 2. The Commander Core is very similar to a Commander Core XT, except instead of the 3-pin RGB port, it has a port labeled EXT. This is for connecting Corsair Elite Series AIOs. You'll only ever see this controller if you buy that AIO. This controller supports up to 204 LEDs across the six ports. In Signal RGB, you'll see one channel for the six RGB fan ports. Make sure to go into settings and toggle pump connected if you have a pump connected, and then select the correct type. It's either the standard Capellix or the LCD version. The Node Core is kind of like the Corsair RGB Fan LED Hub, because it has six 4-pin RGB ports, but instead of connecting into another controller, it connects directly into internal USB 2.0. It's included when you purchase QL fans, any of the SP series fans, or ML Elite fans. You'll also find this controller without the plastic housing inside of the 220T, 4000X, 5000X, and 465X case. This controller supports up to 204 LEDs across the six ports. In Signal RGB, you'll see one channel for the six RGB fan ports. The Lighting Node Pro is a simple controller with two 3-pin RGB ports. It comes included with LL fans, ML fans, HD fans, or the Corsair LED strip kit. You'll also find it inside of the 280X case. Each of the RGB ports can support up to 96 LEDs for a total of 192 LEDs. You can connect the Corsair RGB fan LED hub and expand each port's capability to 204 LEDs or 6 QL fans. That means you can have 12 QL fans running off this tiny controller. In Signal RGB, you'll see two channels, one channel for each RGB port. Now technically, this controller is also included with the Spec Omega case. It just uses a different firmware that makes the first RGB port automatically act as the RGB strip that's at the front of the case. The Spec Omega controller shows up with only one channel in Signal RGB, which is the second port on the controller. That first port is automatically detected as the Spec Omega case strip, and it's going to show up in layouts without you needing to configure anything. The Commander Pro is an older Corsair controller but you can still find it if you get your hands on the Obsidian 500D or 1000D case. This controller includes six ports for fan power, just like the Commander Core XT, except instead of having six four-pin RGB ports, it has two three-pin RGB ports. These two ports function exactly the same as on a Lighting Node Pro, which means you can connect the Corsair Fan RGB LED hub to each port to run up to 12 QL fans. In Signal RGB, you'll see two channels, one channel for each port. That covers all of the relevant Corsair controllers. Lian Li, like Corsair, has a bunch of different RGB controllers, except these are even more confusing because they feature a larger variety of proprietary connectors and other nuances. This is the Strymer Plus V1 controller. It has ports at the top for both the 8-pin and 24-pin Strymer Plus. There's also three ports at the bottom. The important ones you have to connect to your PC is the left port for SATA power and the middle port for 5 volt 3-pin ARGB control. Before you can even use this controller with any software, you have to hold down the M1 button for two seconds. That'll make it so it takes input from the ARGB header. In Signal RGB, you'll have to configure whatever you have the Strymer controller connected to. For example, if it's connected to a motherboard header, then you would go to your motherboard in Signal RGB and set up the component on the correct channel. If your motherboard isn't supported in Signal RGB, then you could use a controller like the Razer controller that we went over earlier. This process is the same anytime you use 5 volt 3 pin ARGB mode on Lian Li controllers, so I'm not going to be repeating this part going forward. For all of the Lian Li controllers I'm about to talk about next, you need to keep in mind that there's no physical button for switching to the 5 volt 3 pin ARGB control mode. You have to install L Connect 3 and switch the mode in their application, and you can't uninstall L Connect 3 or it's going to revert back. However, in Signal RGB, we've added a toggle that lets you bypass that meaning you can uninstall L-Connect if you use Signal RGB. It's only an issue if you plan to use an application that isn't Signal RGB. This is the Strymer Plus V2 controller that comes with the new Strymer Plus V2 cables, but it's also compatible with the previous generation cables. 
The right side of the controller has the port for a 24-pin Strymer cable. The bottom has ports for both 8-pin and triple A-pin Strymer cables. Be sure to flick the switch towards the port where you have the 8-pin cable connected. The left side of the controller has the SATA power cable, the port for the 5-volt 3-pin ARGB cable, and the internal USB 2.0 cable. You have to connect all three of these to your PC if you want it to work in signal RGB. There's one downside to keep in mind. The cables will function as one RGB strip, so you won't be able to achieve the per-LED control that's advertised with the Strymer Plus V2 cables. That's only possible with LKNX preset effects. Now I'm going to move on to Lian Li's fan controllers. But before I do, I want to mention something very important. While Lian Li's fans are great, the firmware on the fan controllers is lacking good direct RGB control. They will have laggy effects across the fans. And I know the most common question is, if it doesn't lag in their LKNX software, then why does it lag in signal RGB? Simply put, it's because Lian Li pre-installed their effects onto the controller so that they can load those effects through LKNX without lag. You can use the 5V 3-pin ARGB mode, which won't lag. But keep in mind that it's only going to give you individual RGB control on the first group of fans. The other three groups would just be mirroring the first group. This won't be an issue if you only plan to have one group of fans on the controller. If you want to have full RGB control across all groups of fans without lag in signal RGB, then you can get various adapter cables to move the fans onto a different controller, which I'll go over in the adapter cables portion of this video. This is the controller that comes with Lian Li's SL fans. It has 8 ports that are broken into 4 groups, 2 ports in each group, one for fan power and one for RGB control. According to Lian Li's website, you can daisy chain 4 fans in each group for a total of 16 SL fans. However, we recommend doing a maximum of 3 fans per group, because we've seen users burn out their controllers when they run 4 fans per group at full brightness. At the top of the controller is where you connect the SATA cable, the USB cable, and the 5V 3-pin ARGB cable. You only need to connect the SATA and USB to your PC if you don't plan to use the 5V 3-pin ARGB control mode. Same goes for every Lian Li fan controller. In Signal RGB, you'll see 4 channels, one for each group. We set the limit in Signal RGB to 3 fans per channel to prevent anyone from burning out the controller. The controller that comes with AL fans is exactly the same both physically and inside of Signal RGB. The only difference between the SL and AL controller is they have different firmware. This is the controller that comes with Lian Li SL Infinity fans. They've introduced a new cable that merges both the fan power and the RGB into one. So instead of having two ports per group, it now has one port per group. The bottom of the controller is where you connect the USB cable and the 5V 3-pin ARGB cable. This cable also includes a 4-pin fan power cable if you want to control the fan speeds through your motherboard or a different controller. Just keep in mind that it will set the speeds to be the same across all four groups, just like how the RGB will be mirrored across all four groups. This controller has two SATA power cables built into it, which means that now you can daisy chain four fans in each group without any issues as long as you connect both of those SATA power cables. In Signal RGB, you'll see four channels, one for each port. That covers all of the relevant Lian Li controllers. Unlike a lot of these other brands, Thermaltake uses the same controller for most of their fans. This is the controller that comes with Thermaltake's Ring Duo, Ring Trio, Ring Quad, Ring Plus, Pure Plus, and SWA fans. It has 5 ports for fans. The connector Thermaltake uses controls both fan speed and RGB. It also looks like an internal USB connector, but be warned, it's not the same thing. If you plug a Thermaltake fan into an internal USB 2.0 header, then you're probably going to damage your motherboard and the fan. The USB cable that connects on the left side of the controller is the one that goes into your motherboard. You'll notice it splits into two so that you can connect the second Thermaltake controller to a single internal USB 2.0 header. The power cable connects on the right side of the controller, which then connects to Molex in your PC. On the back of the controller, you'll find a bunch of switches. This is used to assign different identifiers so that whatever software you use will know the difference between multiple controllers. If you have more than one controller, you'll need to follow this diagram and flick the appropriate switches. In Signal RGB, you'll see five channels, one for each port. Now let's take a look at NZXT's controllers. This is the NZXT RGB and fan controller. NZXT uses this 4-pin proprietary connector on all of their devices. It has 3 ports for fan power, and then these 2 ports are where you connect the NZXT RGB devices. Each of these 2 ports supports up to 40 LEDs for a total of 80 LEDs. All of the NZXT controllers connect to internal USB 2.0, and they're powered using SATA. In Signal RGB, you'll see 2 channels, one for each port. Now let's take a look at the most useful adapter cables. I'll start with adapters for Corsair. And G2 sells four different types of Corsair adapters. The most popular one is the 3-pin female adapter. This is the one that lets you connect any generic 5-volt 3-pin device to Corsair's proprietary 3-pin port. That's the port that's on the Node Pro, Commander Pro, and Commander Core XT. One of the most popular use cases that I've seen is using it to connect Lian Li's Strymer cables to Corsair controllers but you could use it for just about anything. You could even use it to connect Razer products into Corsair controllers. They also sell a male version of the cable. It would let you connect 3-pin Corsair devices into generic 5 volt 3-pin ARGB headers. That means you could connect Corsair devices into any of the non-proprietary controllers I discussed at the start of the video. They also have two other cables. There's the 4-pin female adapter. It would let you connect a generic 5 volt 3-pin into Corsair's proprietary 4-pin. And the 4-pin male adapter. That's basically the reverse. This lets you connect Corsair RGB fans into generic 5 volt 3-pin. 
Now let's move on to adapters for Lianli. Airgu sells an adapter that lets you connect Lianli AL and SL fans into generic 5 volt 3 pin ARGB headers. This is how you can bypass the lag with Lianli controllers. You can move your Lianli fans onto a motherboard header or any other non proprietary controller. Airgu also has an adapter for connecting AL and SL fans into Corsair's 3 pin port, which is useful if you already have a Corsair controller. If you have SL Infinity fans, then you could use this adapter that converts the SL Infinity connector into a fan power connector and a 5 volt 3 pin ARGB connector. Now let's move on to adapters for NZXT devices. Mod DIY has an adapter that lets you connect an NZXT RGB device into Corsair's 3-pin port. They also have one for connecting into Corsair's 4-pin port. I also found this adapter that's going to let you connect NZXT devices into generic 5-volt 3-pin ARGB headers. This covers all of the adapters that I think are relevant to most people's situations. One final thing before I close off this video. If you have a lot of RGB controllers and you don't have enough internal USB ports, then I recommend the NZXT internal USB hub if you prefer something from a brand name. But you can also buy this one that's two times cheaper. I personally use these and they've worked fine for me. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more helpful videos.